we'd like to take a moment to thank our listeners sincerely for your support of Honest News Network Ministry. If you're interested in supporting this ministry, please use the information provided. Thank you. Praise the Lord. It's time to worship in spirit and in truth. Amen. Search me, O God, and know my heart today. Try me, O Savior, know my thoughts, I pray. See if there be some wicked way in me. brothers and sisters. Amen. It's time to pray. Our Heavenly Father, God, we ask that you would help us, Lord, to deliver the message that you've laid on our heart. And we ask that you help us, Lord, to deliver this message the way you'd have us to deliver this message, so that this message will hit its mark, Lord, so we won't miss, Lord. We ask for your help, O oh God. We ask that you bless and that you anoint, Lord, this time as we minister your word. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> How many know that the fire is coming. I may know that the purging has begun. I may know that. It's very serious. We're in a very serious and a very critical hour. And <clears throat> the purging has begun. Now, some things are going to be purged by the Word of God, but that which is not purged by the Word of God 
is going to be purged with destruction. Are you listening? It's going to be cut off and destroyed. But it's great, it's wonderful that God doesn't immediately destroy his enemies. Amen? In the Old Testament, we saw many times where God just wiped out his enemies. <clears throat> but we've got to understand that the long-suffering of God waited many times. We see God was patient, long-suffering, especially with Israel. But there is a cutting off of before there is a destruction. I may know that. And that's entirely up to the Lord. That's his choice. Jesus let us know that the fruit or the branches that don't bring forth fruit, that don't continue to bring forth fruit, that they will be cut off. That doesn't mean they're going to be destroyed. But if they're not re-engrafted in, like Israel is going to be engrafted in, re-engrafted in, if they're not re-engrafted in, they will be destroyed. There's always room, as long as there's breath in your lungs, there's always room for true repentance. I may know that. Thank God that Peter truly repented. Amen? Judas didn't. Do you see the difference? Do you see the difference, folks? Genesis chapter 8, reading verse 22. While the earth remaineth, while the earth remaineth, it's not always going to remain. While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest and cold and heat and summer and winter and day and night shall not cease. Amen. While the earth remaineth. You may know Jesus said heaven and earth's going to pass away. Amen. But while it remaineth, seed time and harvest shall not cease. And that's what I want us to look at. What I feel like the Lord has laid on my heart is that we are in the time of the harvest whether you understand it or not. This is harvest time. And that doesn't mean it's time to ingather. It's seed time. I mean, know that. We're in the seed time. If you sow to the Spirit, you'll reap of the Spirit eternal life, right? Everlasting life. But if you sow to the flesh, you'll reap of the flesh corruption. We're in seed time of the harvest. Not in the reaping time, but in the seed time. Are you listening? Very important to understand that. And in a harvest, there's also a purging. Right? There's a purging. And that's what we're going to be looking at. Exodus Chapter 32 and verse 25. And when Moses saw that the people were naked, when the, Moses saw that the people were naked, for Aaron had made them naked unto their shame among their enemies. Think about that. Among their enemies. And some of those enemies were within. Naked among their enemies. 
Look at the condition of the Laodicean church. You say you're rich, increased with goods, and have need of nothing. And the Lord says, and knowest not that thou art what? Naked. Right? Before your enemies. That's why Jesus said, tarry in Jerusalem to your clothed upon, endued with power. You can't afford to be naked before your enemies. Need to be clothed with power, brothers and sisters. And when Moses saw that the people were naked, for Aaron had made them naked unto their shame among their enemies. Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, Who is on the Lord's side? Talking to you about the purging folks. Who is on the Lord's side? Let him come unto me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. And he said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Put every man his sword by his side, and go in and out from gate to gate throughout the camp, and slay every man his brother, and every man his command companion, and every man his neighbor. The purge, folks, in the Old Testament. God was purging his people. Are you listening? Aren't you glad that we're under grace? Aren't you glad we're under grace? Dear God, choose you this day. Choose you this day who you're going to serve. Amen? Who is on the Lord's side. Sincerely, honestly, who is on the Lord's side? How many know the Lord is returning in judgment? And it's not a physical sword. Amen? It's the sword of the Lord. It's the word of God. Amen. Let's see how many were purged. And the children of Levi did according to the word of Moses, and there fell of the people that day about 3,000 men. And that's something. 3,000 men. Serious. 3,000 led by God, commanded by God, were purged from among God's people. Are you listening? Why didn't God purge Aaron? Think about it. Why didn't he purge the very one that was leading them to worship this golden calf. The one that helped them to prepare it. And God is so merciful, isn't he? He knew that Aaron was being pressured by the people. He knew. And Aaron buckled under the pressure. How many know the pressure's coming? Amen. And the ministers of this hour, you can't buckle under the pressure. Amen. It's better to obey God than to obey man. 
Ought we to obey God rather than men? Amen. When it comes to that, we better be ready. We better be ready to obey God. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 20. The harvest is past. The summer is ended. And we are not saved. Are there any sadder words in the Old Testament scriptures? The harvest is past. The summer is ended. And we are not saved. It can happen to you. Come to the end of the harvest and not be saved. Dear Jesus, come to the end of harvest and not be saved. Lord, help us. Lord, help us. God in heaven, help me to deliver this message, Lord. Oh, Lord Jesus. It's very serious, folks. It's very serious. The purging has begun. Are you listening? Dear Jesus, Jeremiah 23, verse 28. The prophet that hath a dream, let him tell a dream. And he that hath my word, let him speak my word faithfully. What is the chaff? To the wheat, saith the Lord. Is not my word like as a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? Is not my word like a fire? Listen, the prophet that hath a dream, let him tell a dream. And he that hath my word, let him speak my word faithfully. He compares his word to the fire that burns up the chaff. Are you listening? When the harvest is being winnowed. Dear God, folks, listen. When the floor is being purged. Are you listening? When the threshing floor is being purged. Amen. The chaff. Are you listening? is usually blown away by the wind. Listen. God is going to destroy the chaff with fire. Not just blow it away. It's going to be destroyed. The scripture says the wicked are like the chaff. Are you listening? God is purging his floor. Amen. Is not my word like as a fire, saith the Lord. Matthew. Matthew chapter 3, verse 11. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, 
whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Are you listening? Whose fan is in his hand. This is the winnowing fork. This is what Jesus was saying to Peter. Satan has desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. Are you listening? Jesus is going to sift, separate the chaff from the wheat. Are you listening? Whose fan is in his hand, and he will truly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner. But he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Are you listening? Jesus says, don't think I've come to send peace on earth, but a fire. And what if it already is kindled? What if it's already ready for judgment? Dry. Ready. To be burned. Talking about harvest time, brothers and sisters. Psalm, chapter 1, verse 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, And in his law doth he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, and that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Are you listening? Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Now, when I say the purge has begun, I'm telling you that God is separating. He's making a a distinction. He's separating right now. He's already begun to separate. He is making a distinction between that which is his and that which isn't his. That which is going to be gathered into his barn and that which is not going to be gathered into his barn. Are you listening? The Lord knoweth the way of the righteous but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Harvest time, brothers and sisters. Are you listening? Matthew chapter 13, verse 24. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. And when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in the field, in thy field? From whence then hath it tares? 
He said unto them, An enemy has done this. The servants said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather up those tares? But he said, Nay. Lest while you gather up the tares, you root up also the wheat with them. Here is wisdom, brothers and sisters. Are you listening? We need to be very, very discreet in this hour. Are you listening? We need to be waiting on the Lord. We need to be patient. He said, don't pull up the tares. This is probably one of the most difficult things a minister has to deal with, is a tear. Are you listening? Anybody listening? A tear chokes out, tries to choke out the real, the genuine. Are you listening? It looks like wheat. Are you listening? As it's growing together with the wheat, it looks like wheat. But when it's fully grown, you can tell the difference if you know the difference between wheat and tares. How many know? God knows. You and I may not be able to pick it out. We may not be able to see the difference. He does. In fact, he sees and he knows even while the seed is still in the ground. How many know that? God is not ignorant. God is not blind. Amen? He can even see tares growing in the life of the believer. Little seeds of doubt and unbelief and fear. Things the devil has sown into your life. God wants to get rid of that. God wants to purge that out. Are you listening, brothers and sisters? He said, don't gather up the tares. Because if you do, you could root up one of the wheat. Now, I want you to understand, brothers and sisters, Jesus is not mentioning the barley. For you that are in the know, <clears throat> you're blessed. If you understand these things, if you understand the difference between the barley and the wheat, how many know the barley is not harvested at the same time as the wheat? When Jesus is speaking in terms of the wheat, he's talking about the end of the world, the end of the age. He's talking about the end of the harvest. Are you listening? He's talking about just before summer, just before the grapes are gathered and trampled. Anybody listening? So the tares, they're already growing among the wheat. Who's the wheat? Who are the wheat? The wheat are those that are going to be beheaded for the testimony of Jesus during the tribulation hour. In fact, during the great tribulation, not just the tribulation at the beginning, but they're going to go through tribu the great tribulation. And the tares are going to be growing among them. The tares are Satan's sons. Are you listening? We've got to be long-suffering and patient because there are sons of Satan, fully developed children of the devil that are growing amongst the wheat. Not growing amongst the barley, but growing amongst the wheat. Are you listening? Now, as I've already said, a tear can get sown into the life of any believer. You've got to be very careful that you don't allow Satan to sow tares into your life. Are you listening? First chance he gets, he'll try to put a seed of doubt or unbelief. Are you listening? How easily, how quickly at times did Simon Peter become a tear? Grabbed a hold of the Lord. 
Not so, Lord. You can't go to the cross. Amen. Beware, brothers and sisters, of the, the enemy's tactics. Amen. He's trying to get a seed sown into your life. But we're not dealing with tares as far as seeds being sown into a believer's life altogether. The more dangerous thing is the fact that there are literally Satan's sons in his kingdom that Satan is planting among the wheat, those that are going to end up in great tribulation. In all of this, we are instructed by the Lord to leave them alone, right? Even if there may be a situation where a tear needs to be dealt with in the household of faith, God says, leave it alone. Amen? Don't try to deal with it. Are you listening? God, the Father, he's the husband. And he will instruct and give wisdom. A wise minister is led by the Spirit. Are you listening? And he won't, he won't hurt or destroy the actual wheat or the actual uh, substance. God is so good. He's so faithful, brothers and sisters, to separate that which is evil and that which is good. Amen? But he says, let them both grow together. How long? Until the harvest. Let them grow together. Until the harvest. Notice what he says next. And in the time of harvest, are you listening? We're in the time of harvest, folks. In the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, gather ye together first the tares and bind them in bundles and burn them but gather the wheat into my barn. Are you listening? God says, bind them in bundles to burn them. How many know right now, all over this earth, they are being binded up in bundles? Oh, yeah. Dear God. These dark places. Satanic worship, calling it the gospel. They're being bundled up. Are you listening? Before long, they'll probably be naked. Are you listening? just like those at the bottom of the mountain before their enemies. Are you listening, folks? But the tares are the actual sons of Satan. They're these mega churches today where the sons of Satan are literally the false prophets. They are the very leaders of these churches that are leading the people like an Aaron under the pressure. Anybody listening? How could Aaron do such a thing? And just in case you think that Aaron that he actually was right with God even after this happened. It's time for the blinders to come off, people. We need to see things as they really are. It's time for the blinders to come off. We need to see what God was seeing for 40 years in the wilderness. 
Not only did Aaron make God's people naked before their enemies, cause them to worship a golden calf under the pressure, but God says, you took up the tabernacle of Molech for 40 years. You didn't offer up sacrifices to me. Dear God, how many, how many of God's people today How many? It's almost impossible. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, if the Holy Ghost does not help me to share what he's put on my heart, I won't be able to. Because only he can draw the distinction between the vile, between that which is holy and that which is evil, wicked. I mean, when you start comparing wheat with tares, are you listening? Let them grow together. Aaron, what are your sons doing? Offering strange fire. God says they took up the tabernacle of Moloch. They worship their, the star of their god, Renfam. For 40 years, they all died in the wilderness, people. They never made it into the promised land. It was the children, they said, that would not make it, that ended up going in with Joshua and Caleb. Even Moses didn't make it in. Are you listening? God's holy. And he said, I'll have no other gods before me. I'm a jealous God. Amen. Praise the Lord. There's a lot of satanic worship going on today in so-called Christian churches. Are you listening? These are bundles. They're bundles. You gotta understand those that came out of Egypt. They weren't regenerated. Are you listening? They didn't have a regenerated heart. They they had never been born again. These were people of carnal nature. Are you listening? Same thing with Aaron. To some degree, he was listening and he was, you got to remember, this is Moses' brother. God uses what he can, folks. Even Moses was a murderer. Are you listening? Like night and day between Moses and, and Joshua. Can you say amen? Praise the Lord. Did you know as soon as Joshua died, as soon as he died, the people, they continued to serve God because there were some elders. Are you listening? That out overlived Joshua. And the people continued to serve God until those elders died. Are you listening? Then they began to go back to Satan. They go back to Satan worship. And God raised up judges. Anybody listening? There was famine in the land during the days of the judges, as there always will be. 
Are you listening? God's way is true prophets. Amen? God didn't even want to have a king over his people. They desired a king. Oh, dear God. When are God's people going to humble themselves and serve the living God with an honest heart, with a pure heart? Amen. The reapers are the angels. Are you listening? And I didn't just pull that out of a hat, brothers and sisters. Matthew 13, 31, another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like to a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in a field. That's not the one I wanted. <clears throat> Praise you, Jesus. This is what I want right here. Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house, and his disciples came unto him, saying, Declare unto us the, the parable of the tares of the field. And he answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. And I looked up this word children in the original Greek, and it's huios. It's not babes. It's not little children. It's sons. The field is the world. The good seed are the sons of God. Listen. But the tares are the sons of the wicked one. These are fully developed. These are grown. He's not speaking of babes and children here. Listen. The enemy sowed them. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The sons of Satan. The harvest is the end of the world. The reapers are the angels. This is speaking during great tribulation, folks. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of the world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out all out of his kingdom that offend and them which do iniquity. Are you listening? And he shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Listen to this. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Your God. Second Tim, uh, Peter chapter three and verse one. This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord, of our Lord and Savior. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts, and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. Listen, for this they willingly are ignorant of, 
that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was, being overflowed with water, perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. Are you listening? The purge has already begun, folks. It's already begun. But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering, Long suffering to us, word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. He's long suffering to us, word, his people. Some of his people need to repent, they need to get back to the Lord. He's long suffering to us, word. I don't see any repentance in Aaron when Moses came down from the mount. But I do read in the scripture where God says, you did not take up my tabernacle in the wilderness for 40 years. You took up the tabernacle of Molech. You worshiped your God, Renfam. Are you listening, brothers and sisters? For 40 years, you go read it yourself. Unless the blinders are off, you will think they're serving God. You will think that when they are following the cloud by day and they're following the pillar of fire by night, are you listening? You would think that when they're offering sacrifices up to God, offering the blood upon the mercy seat once a year. You would think all of that was being done for God. God is long-suffering, willing that none should perish. He said at one point to Moses, get out of my way, Moses. I'll destroy them all right now. Are you listening? And Moses, he said to the people, let me go. In fact, let's go to that scripture. Dear God, when Moses saw that the people were naked, for Aaron had made them naked unto their shame among the enemy, among their enemies. Then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, who is on the Lord's side? Let him come unto me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. And he said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Put every man his sword by his side, and go in and out from the gate to gate throughout the camp, and slay every man his brother, and every man his companion, and every man his neighbor. And the children of Levi did according to the word of Moses, and there fell of the people that day about 3,000 men. Listen to this. And it came to pass on the next day, on the morrow, that Moses said unto the people, you have sinned a great sin. And now I will go up unto the Lord and preadventure I shall make an atonement for your sin. No, Moses, you will never make an atonement for sin. You're not the Savior, Moses. You're not Jesus Christ, Moses. And Moses returned unto the Lord and said, Oh, this people have sinned a great sin and have made them gods of gold. Listen. 
Yet now, he's praying to God. Yet now, if thou will forgive their sin, and if not, blot me, I pray thee, out of thy book, which thou hast written. Do you even know what you're saying, Moses? Do you even know what you're saying? You want to spend eternity separated from God? In eternity, separated from God. In hell, in the lake of fire forever, Moses? Being presumptuous, isn't he? He thinks he's going to make an atonement? Blot me out. You say, well, Moses had good intentions. Dear God, he didn't understand. He didn't understand. There's none righteous, not one. That's why Jesus came. Are you listening? He's the one that made the atonement. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man goeth unto the Father but by him. Even Moses had to be saved. Amen. And the Lord said unto Moses, Whosoever hath sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. Dear God. Are you listening, people? Moses thought he could be the Savior. You could say it. You could say, oh, well, Moses had good intentions. Yeah, a lot of God's people have good intentions, but that's not enough. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Do you understand, people, what Moses is saying? And he wasn't the only one. Paul the Apostle said, I could be accursed for my brethren. Do they even understand what they're saying? No. No, they're not. They do not understand what they're saying. Who in their right mind would say, God, I don't want to be in heaven with you. Blot me out. They didn't understand it. I don't know about you, brothers and sisters, but I'm not interested in being your savior. I need him. I need him. I need Jesus. He, he only can save us, folks. He's the only savior. Can you imagine? 40 years they took up the tabernacle of Moses and God put up with it. He put up with it. just like he puts up with our backsliding hearts today. Half-hearted worship. Amen. You say you're rich, increased with goods, and have need of nothing? Now knowest not that thou art wretched, poor, blind, miserable, and naked. You see... God sees what we don't see. Amen. Another place the Lord says, I have somewhat against you. You've left your first love. In other words, why are you doing it? Jesus said, why call me Lord and do not what I say? It comes down to the motive, folks, of the heart. I'm talking to you about purging. Talking to you about purging. Talking to you about the time of the harvest. I'm talking to you about a separation, a distinction 
There, God makes a distinction between that which is holy, that which is righteous, and that which is unholy and unrighteous. Amen. What is the what is the chaff to the fire, people? Amen. If Brother Joseph does not have a word from the Lord, we are all men most miserable. Preparing for the fire to be blown away and destroyed. (laughs) But the Lord... He's going to gather some into his barn. Amen. He's going to have. He's going to have some. He's going to separate the precious from the vile. Amen. Praise the Lord. We are in the time of harvest. We're in the time, brothers and sisters, of the sowing of the seed, of seed time. Amen. We're in the time of the latter rain, where the seed is being sown. There's time to make up your mind. There's time. Yeah, summer may be a long way down the road but it comes quickly. It catches you when you're not watching. (laughs) Thou hast set them in slippery places. (laughs) Don't, don't trust in your own heart. The heart's desperately wicked. Who can know it? Deceitful above all things. That's why God says, obey me. Obey me. Don't try to reason. Don't try to figure it out. Just obey me. Faith and obedience. Amen. Faith and obedience. It's not up to me or you, brothers and sisters, to take the word of God and to reason with it in the sense that we're trying to Figure it out on our own. When he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will lead and guide you into all truth. He will not speak of himself. Amen. John said, he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost. But we're in the time now of the fire. Amen. And the Lord is going to thoroughly purge his floor. This is not a game. This is serious. Amen. He's going to gather the substance into his barn. Praise the Lord. I was reading last night about how Boaz, how he reached. He reached to Ruth some parched corn. Praise you, Jesus. You could not eat parched corn, folks, until after the first of the first fruits had been offered up to God. God had to seal. He had to put his signature he had to authorize the harvest of your field to begin are you listening Boaz was a godly man are you listening oh god that wasn't wheat harvest folks that was barley harvest 
It wasn't wheat that the little boy had to feed the multitudes. It was barley. Are we ever going to listen? Are we ever going to listen to God? I recently just heard a minister encouraging the people, keep rowing. Grab an oar and keep rowing. We're just waiting for Jesus. We're just waiting. In the storm. Afraid. Terrified. Where is he? Where is he? If we ever needed Jesus, we need him now. I heard a minister actually saying these words. This idea from his own mind, his own imagination. He said, here they are out there on this boat, in the storm, and they're toiling. He said, and they look over and they see this big ship. And it's charismatics. And they're eating their caviar and they're drinking their champagne. And he was saying how that in their mind, these charismatics are looking down at this little boat with 12 or so disciples. And they're mocking, they're making fun while they're on this big ship. And he was talking about on the back of the ship, it said SS Titanic. And I understand the analogy. I really do. I understand the analogy. I understand what he's saying. But he didn't get it in the Bible. Are you listening? And, and he was preaching to the people, you got to keep rowing. You got to keep on toiling till Jesus gets here. Are you listening? And he was talking about how how that they were, these charismatics were mocking them in this little boat. And he preached to them how the Titanic ended up going down, right? And he was talking about the charismatics, so they're going to go down, all the tares and all, all the wheat and or the chaff, excuse me, not the wheat. And uh, those that are on this little boat that they ended up on the other side, they made it to the other side when Jesus ended up coming to them. And this is how he's preaching to them. And in my mind, I'm thinking, you're encouraging the people to keep rowing. Keep toiling. And my question is, why did Jesus constrain them to get into the ship? Why did he constrain them to get into the boat? Why wasn't the Lord with them? We better wake up, people. We better wake up quick. Are you listening to me? The church is headed into a storm. We're just waiting for Jesus. We're just waiting for the Lord to show up. And no doubt there'll be those like Peter. Lord, if it's you, bid me to come onto the water. Bid me to come to you. I want you to understand, brothers and sisters, there's something better. Something better than waiting for Jesus in the storm. And that is not being in the storm at all. Are you listening? How many? How many of those disciples would have liked to have been back on that shoreline 
with Jesus sending the people away? Huh? How many of them, instead of murmuring and complaining? How many of them, while they're out there, frantically trying to stay alive, trying to stay afloat, hoping that the boat doesn't get turned sideways? In a storm, they were against the, uh, there was a contrary wind that was against them. And they couldn't obey the Lord because that wind was trying to keep them from getting to the other side. But how many of them on that boat were thinking, boy, I shouldn't have complained. I shouldn't have murmured. I should have just done what he told me to do. I should have just been obedient. Can you see the disciples? There's too many of them, Lord. All we got is this little boy's lunch and some barley loaves here and some fish. What, what's this among so many? Are you ever going to believe me? Are you ever going to see me as I am? Are you ever going to believe me? That's what the church is doing today. They're looking at the little loaves and the few fish. And they can't see the God that multiplies the loaves and the fishes. But worse than that, they can't see the one that's standing on the shore with the fire and coals, with fish cooking on the fire, bread. My people can't see. They're wretched, they're poor, they're blind, they're blind, they're blind, they're blind. They can't see the Lord. They can't see him. If ever the church needed a vision, they need him now. They need the Lord to open their eyes. They need eye salve. While the church today is headed into a storm where they're going to wait for the Lord for three and a half years, there are some, there are some that are learning the truth. Quit murmuring and complaining and just do as you're told. Just obey him. Amen. Just do what the Lord told you to do. Be obedient. Obey the Lord. He knows what he's doing. The scripture says he knew what he would do, but he was tr- he was proving them. He was testing them to see what they would do. He knew what he was going to do. He was testing them. I want to say something to you, brothers and sisters. Where is your faith? Where is your faith? Where is your faith? When Jesus comes, he says, will he find faith on the earth? Amen. The purge has already begun. And every branch that does not continue to bear fruit is going to be cut off. Are you listening? Cut off and and cast into fire of the first three and a half years of the tribulation hour. Amen. Dear God, Folks, we need so desperately to listen and let the Lord purge us with the truth. Let him teach us. I don't know about you, brothers and sisters, but I want to be with the Lord in the mount, praying. I want to be with the Lord that sees them in the storm. Amen. I want to be with him up in the mountain interceding 
praying for them while the church is in the wilderness for three and a half years. I don't want to be toiling against the contrary wind for three and a half years because I wasn't willing to eat now, because I wasn't willing to be nourished now. The Lord is producing overcomers, people. He's knocking at the door. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and sup with him and he with me. He's knocking. He's knocking. It's the voice of my beloved that knocketh. Open to me, my love, my dove, my undefiled. Let's not make excuses, folks. Let's open the door wide and let the Lord come in. Amen? Dear God, praise the Lord. God has chose those in this world that are considered foolish to confound the wise. Amen? Stay humble. Stay small in your own eyes, people. Don't get lifted up. Stay small. Humble yourself. Let the Lord do the exalting. Amen? You humble yourself and you let the Lord exalt you. You let the Lord do the exalting. Don't praise yourself. Let the Lord praise you. Amen? To the praise of his glory. Don't seek for the praise of men. Let the Lord purify you. Let him purge you to offer to him an offering in righteousness, brothers and sisters. Acceptable, holy, unacceptable, which is our reasonable service. Our God is a consuming fire. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Satan rages, we cannot be defeated.